Welcome to Adulting with Autism. Today's episode is going to be slightly different because Liz is ill, so I'll be handling your questions solo. Hopefully, I'll do okay. Izzy is a Hufflepuff and says, I just saw your tips for toothbrushing, and though they're very helpful, can you offer some tips as to how I can stop forgetting to slash coming up with excuses not to brush my teeth? Please and thank you. Now, what I generally recommend is something like uh, Habitica or similar apps that sort of um, provide little incentives and a kind of game-like structure. Um, I wouldn't say gamify, I hate that word, an irrational amount, but that's something that's worked for me in the past. Um, just something like that, or um, writing down a little schedule for yourself could work quite well. Um, yeah, that's about as much as I've got for for that one, really. Just try and uh, establish a routine either through an app or through a um, more old-fashioned sort of method. But whatever you do, just do it. Try and go a couple of days in a row of doing a thing, and you should start to adjust, hopefully. Um, okay. Next question, Fire Sidoni asks, I generally have a terrible time making out what people are saying when there's much background noise. Is this potentially an autism thing or just a me thing? It is definitely not just a you thing. It's, um, you know, that's something where um, I'll, I'll definitely have a problem hearing people if there's a lot going on um, I tend to tend to withdraw and things like that because um, it can be hard to pick out one particular set of sounds and interpret them so you're definitely not alone there as for dealing with it I really don't um, have an answer for you there I'm sorry I guess Avoid, I just avoid those situations where I can. Yes, Harry Potter lover 123BLR, I guess that's 123Blur, says, Hi, I'm autistic. I try following blogs and debating people, but I wind up offending people accidentally. I don't feel comfortable saying it's autism because it might not be, as I'm very sheltered and privileged, rich and white, and it sounds like an excuse regardless of the situation in question. But I'm sick of seeing privileged entities get the benefit of the doubt just for being tactful any advice okay um for not funny people i guess i've definitely had that problem um i guess th th um one thing that really helps is just well sometimes i just go right i won't uh, discuss um, discuss this issue if it's sort of a an emotive topic because I, I think one thing that really that can cause problems I think this came up in a previous episode is when you're interested in sort of an abstract debate on an issue like that's a general you a lot of people I think can can get this um Neurotypicals as well. Um, people, l people are like looking at issues in the abstract and kind of going about it in a uh, thought experiment kind of way. When the person they're trying to have the conversation with is saying, "Look, this happened to me. This was a experience I had." And I guess the main thing is, is this a person who is um, talking about? You know, if you're if you're looking at a blog and somebody's um, talking about an experience they've had or have um, on a on a regular semi regular basis, for instance, like stuff I might post. Um, oh no, money's really tight or something like that. There might be um, or alternatively. Um, Alright, for familiar ground, somebody's blogging about sensory issues. 
you wouldn't want like I'm sure lots of us post about that, that kind of thing, but you wouldn't um but you wouldn't want somebody replying to that saying like let's start a long um proper debate about um how you feel. <laughs> so that's sometimes how um trying to debate people comes across I think. Because sometimes the best response isn't a debate. It's not. It's not what you. Not necessarily what you want. And it seems you like debating, but sometimes what you, what's really best, is just to say. That sucks. That's, um, not great. Rather than saying, but does it really happen like that? Or um, is your experience really valid that can just I think um, yeah get in the way that means you're not going to get a good faith debate because you know you could maybe you could maybe say um, on a particular issue I'm not sure that there's a difference between disagreeing um, on a solution for a societal problem, which you know is fine, it happens every day. That's perfectly healthy, and disagreeing that something is a problem in the first place. And I think it's quite it's quite possible and healthy to have a a discussion about um, about the former, the kind of right, you know. Uh, this is an issue, how do we get past it? Because, you know, there aren't always cut and dried answers to these questions. But the, I think the the trick is, you know, at least start off saying, that sucks, how can things get better? Rather than, did this really happen? Was this an issue? Was that person, um, you know, uh, Acting their way in purpose. I, I don't know. I'm uh, can't th- run and dry on examples, but I think maybe do something like put up on your on your blog. I don't know if you have it already. Um, something about I like um, I like debating, and maybe post sort of an invitation like uh put a post up on your blog or on a little add a little line to your profile saying hey i'm open for like a proper you know theoretical uh debate theoretical conversation and i think you know there's impassioned conversations about social justice and there's debates about these things and i think that you know there's room for there's room for both but you got to set the parameters when it's a debate. You don't just, like, in um, in schools and colleges, debate clubs don't just suddenly spring up and, um, you know, it's got to be formalised. Um, you've got to say, right, we'll assemble here, we'll try and keep by these, uh, by these rules and not make things too personal. And that's, that's great, that's fine, but... I think a real problem lies when um, people take that kind of debate club um, mentality, debate club ethos, and expect it to apply in every situation. Um, It doesn't sound like you're falling into that trap because you want to engage with people in a respectful way and you're trying to work out how to do that, so kudos to you on that. But I think that's the main thing. You got you've got to set the parameters and say, okay, um, this is a this is a call for debate. Get in my inbox or um, reply to my post, and you know we can start that conversation. I think it's, but if you and I think that could happen. You know, maybe might not be that successful, but. You got a better shot with that, because sometimes you might end up uh, derailing 
a more like personal subjective conversation um about social justice and things like that with um a demand for an entirely different kind of conversation and you don't want to do that and i think that's how things can get out of hand it's two very very different styles of um discussing issues and yeah i guess that's that's what you got to be uh got to be really clear on and if you if you say sorry i was trying to you can always say sorry i was looking at it in a bit of an abstract kind of way um i wasn't trying to minimize um you know what what you're going through or what or the or the issue you can just say you know sorry i'm looking at it a bit too abstract um you know you guys carry on and or alternatively try and look at it from the other person's point of view like how you'd feel um if somebody you know tried to put an abstract spin on something very personal to you but that's i'm i've started rambling so that's about as uh about as much as I got on that one, I think. Okay. Um, there's a long question here. Um, it's a three-parter, and it sounds kind of thorny. So I'm probably going to be spending the rest of the uh, rest of the episode of the podcast um, responding to this and trying to work out exactly what to say. Hello guys, Anonymous says, I was wondering how you feel about polyamory. As a queer autistic boy in a big group of friends, including my partner, who are all holistic, uh, NB, queer and polyamorous, no one's dating each other, just friends, I feel very left out in a way because my brain is incredibly hierarchical. I find that I can only have one best friend at a time, and I can only love one person, i.e. my partner. How can I unlearn this hierarchical thinking? It feels absolutely impossible. But I hate feeling left out, a big source of anxiety for me. People often, my friends and partner included, seem to make polyam seem like a more moral alternative, and that monogamy, on the other hand, is a conscious choice one has to be determined, determined to make. This feels alien and a bit upsetting to me, and even though my partner says that just because you love one person doesn't mean you love someone else more, you can love equally, this concept I just cannot grasp. It's as hard for me to understand as it is for humans in general to imagine colours we've ever seen. It's impossible, but I feel kind of guilty and immoral, as if I'm not as emotionally developed as them or something, and as if I'm possessive, well, because I can't handle my partner dating someone else than me while they're dating me. My partner isn't actively polyamorous when they're with me because they know it upset me, but still, I don't want to be the orty weirdo. I don't know what to do. Ooh. and breathe right that sounds like a fraught sitch um thing is yeah I, I know lots of my friends who are polyamorous as well as uh, many of the things you've mentioned now I think that frankly I'm sure Liz will back me up on this acting all sort of as if it's a better choice is just daft it's plain daft is what it is now looking at alternative forms of relationships to monogamy that's it's really interesting it works really well for some people but not for others some people have um, you can have vastly different levels of comfort and different thresholds for jealousy without being a controlling person, without being a bad or insecure person. And, yeah, it's okay that you feel that, you know, there's one person you want to be with and you don't want to um, date anyone else or have your partner date anyone else. That's fine. And... You know, that could be the way you feel for the rest of your life. You could change your mind at a later point. But whatever feels 
right in that relationship is the right call. There's no... There's no higher or better form of a relationship. And anybody who says otherwise is leading you astray, I think. I th- I think that yeah. There's a there's a good chance with with a lot of people who um who wouldn't be comfortable um being polyamorous and going for it anyway. I feel like there's you know, if if you feel like you'd get possessive then simply trying to switch to a different form of relationship wouldn't necessarily make that go away. It just might manifest in a different different way. It doesn't sound like you're um you know, it doesn't sound like you're being a bad or possessive person at all. It just sounds like, you know, lots of people just have um a a small amount of people they're close to in a um in terms of friendship and romance. Like lots of people have one partner and one best friend. That's that's a really common thing and sometimes people can be a bit elitist about it and a bit uh like oh, I'm doing a different thing. I'm you know, I'm standing out. It may uh You know, it could be that they're not trying to say that the form of their relationship is an inherently more um, more moral choice. It could just be that it's the right it's the right thing for them, and you know they there's a point. Um, Run halfway through talking about monogamy as a as a conscious choice. Like they're both, um, they're both conscious choices. Like um, choosing to remain with one one person, uh, choosing to be with uh, multiple people. That's that's a conscious choice, but it doesn't. Choosing something that's different from the mainstream isn't necessarily the better thing. It's not necessarily the worst thing. The only, um, the only good way to make the kind of decision is based around your emotional well-being. That's it. There's no other, you know, and your partner's emotional well-being. That's the only, the only thing that really matters there. It's important to just do what makes you happy. There's no more um, right or wrong answer than that. And it sounds like you're somebody who'd feel much more comfortable being monogamous. It feels like, you know, you... um, Yeah, you just wouldn't be happy with that. And it would make you feel less happy in the relationship and even if you feel like um you know if you if you say said to your partner all right let's uh try a different tack um if you're doing that just to make them them happy and you were uncomfortable with it um chances are they would notice uh your discomfort and um, that would have a ultimately a knock on a knock on effect. I think. I feel like um, yeah. If you if you think it's a thing you can handle and go for, and would be genuinely interested in it, then go for it. But you know going going down that path because of what sounds like peer pressure is a really really bad way to go I think it's got to be about what's right for for you 
and what's right for your partner and you know if uh, and it's I don't think it's necessarily um, yeah I, I don't think it's necessarily uh, autism at the at the root of it it may have something to do with it but yeah it's you don't have to unlearn any thinking and you don't have to to change the, the thing is if it is down to um, down to disability then you know anybody expecting you to change um, change a part of yourself change a part of your thinking is just being really gross I think it's, it's that's just plain weird you know you're yourself there's no better person to be there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing less moral about you you're trying to do what's right for your emotional well-being it doesn't sound like you're judging others it doesn't sound like you're um, doing anything negative towards anyone you keep on going the way you're going and it might be a good idea to talk to um, talk to your friends about how they may come across and how um, how it feels like they're sort of pushing it as a superior thing because you know you I guess a lot of people fall into monogamy by default but you're somebody who knows the options there knows the choices they've got and you you seem to know what makes you feel comfortable there's a there's definitely a point to be made that people you know just kind of default to monogamy but yeah for some people it sounds like you included it's the right way to the right way to go oh that is the last question in the inbox and that just about wraps up the show somehow i've managed to talk for about as long as our, our regular show just on my lonesome i was uh you know i was tempted to just fill in for liz by um occasionally doing an impression but i think that they probably end up listening and i'm not sure they'd appreciate it so it's Tara for now. Until next time, dear listeners, that was Adulting with Autism, a very Nick-centric special. Take care, and keep...